the film makes it look like the prison guards open the door and Charlie just jumps out and knocks fuck out of all of them. We've all seen the film Bronson. That's what it comes across as. It's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. What used to happen was he'd have a row with a screw. Something would happen. He'd fucking have a row with one of them or whatever. A couple of them would grab him. He'd fucking clock one or whatever. That'd be it. He'd go back to his fucking cell. He'd get locked up. And then about one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, the door would fucking boot open. There'd be 12 of them with helmets on, truncheons, everything. And they would go in and they would batter the living fuck out of him. Absolutely fucking batter him. I'm talking batter him senseless. They fucking wrap him up and put him in a in a body bag, you know, like with all straps around it, and stand him in a box. And he'd be left there for three days in a fucking box, standing upright, covered in blood and bo broken bones and all sorts, right? When he wasn't in his box, they'd pull him out of his box, he'd be in a fucking big straight jacket like this. Right? They'd go in, they'd just throw his food on the floor. They wouldn't even leave it on the fucking plate. They'd just go in and tip it on the floor. He had to eat his food off the floor like a fucking dog. Lick it off the floor. Then they'd go in and kick the shit out of him again. And they'd keep kicking the shit out of him. And in them days, it was all ex-military people. So they were all hard bastards. Fucking stoltz steel toe caps and all the rest of it. They used to go in and kick the living shit out of him all the fucking time. Now, what had happened is, if I kick the shit out of you now, right, you'd be like, fucking alert. But if I kick the shit out of you every day for two weeks, after two weeks, you'd be like, oh, fucking no, is that, it? Is that all you've got? Because your body would become used to it. And that's what happened with Charlie. He's, he got used to being battered that much that he just got immune to it. And then he started thinking to himself, I'm not fucking letting these get away with that. So every time that door opened, he was expecting 12 people to come in with riot shields and kick the shit out of him. So every time the door opened, he was fucking there, ready, and he'd fucking launch it, whoever it was, come out swinging and all the rest of it. But that was them that made him do that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that he's not been violent and he's not been a nasty bastard, he fucking has, and I'll be the first to tell you that. Some of the stories that he's told me are things that have gone on. I've said that I will never repeat, and I will never repeat them ever again. They're between me and him. There's a lot of personal stuff that we'll never talk about to anybody. Um, the fighting and the brutality and all the rest of it was absolutely shocking, and it was done to such an extent that it's actually given him fucking post-traumatic stress, right? He's, he's traumatised. He would never admit it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't wake up in the middle of the night having fucking nightmares and all sorts of stuff. He slept on concrete floors with no bed, no fucking toilet seat, nothing for like two years. It's just, you know, they fed him under a cat flap under the door, a little flap with his food. He didn't see anybody, he didn't integrate with anyone. 